Okay, you guys, here we go. I'm going to discuss uh, a little bit more what the personhood is so that you will have a better understanding of it. And then I'm going to get into what the concepts are. Okay, so as I've said many times before, the personhood is what is personal to us. But the fact of the matter is we were created in the image of the Trinity. We are spirit. This form is from the elements of the earth and the sky. And we have five aspects to this form, which is Father God. Father God, as I've shown you through that Greg Braden uh, video and his research, Father God is also in every single one of our DNAs. We are his children. Okay? So, the personhood means anything that's personal to you. So, this is also where the ego lives. This is also where our emotions live. Okay? So, what exactly do, do I mean when I say what is personal to us? Well, what is personal and the ego go hand in hand. Okay? When you hear people out here talking and actually bragging about things that they've done in the darkness, and like if someone constantly keeps repeating how they spent time in prison, and they, they put that out here like it's some kind of badge, like it's some kind of trophy, they have not transcended the personhood yet. That is ego, that is pride, um, that is darkness. You see, when, when you're in the light, the light transcends all darkness. You will understand that there really was no past. Because you were never the person that Satan had you believing that you were. This is what I mean on what is personal. When you see people out on the internet who are bragging about uh, how many followers they have on their page. Um, how many awards they've earned in life. Um, you, you know, one of the best sayings that I ever heard was from my teacher who said, knowledge is for the ignorant. Knowledge is for the ignorant. And what does that mean? The ignorant means a sleeper. Not someone who's stupid. The ignorant, the ignorant means a sleeper, someone who is not awakened yet. So what do they do? They seek and they need knowledge. They need knowledge. They will research all kinds of religious texts. Uh, they, you will see them out here quoting texts all over the place, having debates with people all over the place. And the ego tries to make, well, the ego tries to tell them that their point of view is right and they don't want to hear what anyone else has to say. That is pure ego and that is pure sleep. So now let's take a brief look at what the concepts are. So remember what I told you, when we finally actually wake up, we will see that every single thing that we have ever learned was a lie. And it is the complete opposite of what is the true reality, which is God's reality. This is how you can understand without a doubt that we were born into Satan's kingdom. If, you'd, if you've studied anything about these demons and these principalities, you will understand that God reigns in the third heaven and the second heaven and the first heaven, Satan reigns. Those are Satan's kingdoms on the earth. The Nephilim were told, commanded by God, to roam the earth and torment the people of the earth. So from the earth up to the second heaven, there's nothing but demons in the spiritual realm. Okay? So, we were created in the image of the Trinity. So, when this form was born, time began for this body. Every single body that's here has a limited time on this earth. None of us know when our time is up, but we have a limited time on this earth. So when this body was born, time started for this body. Now you understand if you studied anything from these, uh, these deliverance pages that the spiritual realm is not in the time-space continuum. We are in the 3D world. So time starts for this form. The spirit sense, the spirit self that we are, we're not from this 3D realm. Only this body is. Only this body is. So 
the spirit, our spirit needs this body in order to experience life. And we need this body in order to wake up. Okay? So, what is a concept? Well, it's everything you've ever been taught your entire life. Let's start firstly with your name. Your spirit does not have a name. Your name is associated with this body. Your name is associated with this gender. Then we were taught um, what our gender was. Then we were taught what our role in society would be for our gender. Then we, we were introduced to church. Well, religion is also in Satan's kingdom. And it's run by people in the sleep. It's run by people in the sleep. And we learn more rules. What, uh, what, uh, what are rules of morality and, and, and the rules of doctrine that, that nobody from the church ever listens to. But we're forced to go to church anyways. And most of our families never went to church and never looked at a Bible. There's Christians for you. Uh, but yet Christians want to judge the rest of the world. Isn't that special? Um, then we get introduced to school. We learn more rules in school. Not only curriculum, but we learn what is uh, proper social etiquette. When we're around other people, uh, we shouldn't yell at other people. We shouldn't hurt other people. We shouldn't hit other people. We shouldn't take anybody else's toys. We should learn how to share. All of these things we start learning in school. Okay? And if you don't do these things, you're bad. And, as, and we are continuously learning these concepts as we grow, as we age, okay? So this form is changing. This is not the same form that, that was born for my mother. This form is constantly changing, but the spirit self has never changed. The spirit self does not age. And the spirit self, this is why the spirit self is able to witness our thoughts because as we were born into this, life here into this 3d reality our parents the majority of our parents uh were not awake they were way deep in the sleep uh had no clue about these demons uh so they were infested with demons and so what happened well these demons started jumping into us at a very early age very early age and for what i learned from bob larson was that if your mother never wanted you from pregnancy, you were never wanted. Well, these demons were actually jumping in while you were in the womb. Okay. Um, it's also possible that for boys, if, if, if uh, uh, a mother had a boy and she wanted a girl and she actually says that over and over, I wanted a girl. I wish I would have had a girl. She's actually giving word curses to her son and demons are jumping in the kid. And you will see the, the kid will turn out to be gay. And it's not because he's gay. It's because these demons jumped in him. When the demons are cast out, he's not gay any longer. We do not understand the spiritual world. And this is what the problem is. Even for these people who are doing deliverance, they don't understand the spiritual world. So you have to understand every single name that you buy into, even calling yourself a Christian, that was a name given to you in the satanic kingdom so that you can fight with other people from different religions. That's what Satan's goal is. Keep everybody away from God. Let's fight against each other. This is what's going on here. Now, if you want to step away, step back, and actually look at, at, at history, look at what you're seeing on the news, Look at how you're seeing all of these religions fighting with each other. And what's happening? Well, everybody believes their religion is correct. And everybody believes their God is the real God. And Satan's sitting back going, mm -hmm. yep, 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 yep. Another one for me. Another one for me. 
You got to understand what's happening here, you guys. You really got to understand what's happening here. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm literally in shock. I, I, I can't believe it, honestly. I really can't believe it. Where are Christians supposed to go when, when the leaders of their church are dead in the sleep? Where are they supposed to go? You see, what, what, I, what I said in my last video, that I felt that as a Christian, the first thing that a Christian, a true Christian... Not a, not a name Christian that's following a religion. And that's what you're seeing in these pastors. It's a, the name religion. Following in the religion. They're at the religion level. They are nowhere near awake. This is how they are able to hurt other people out here. This is what I was saying. This is what gets me. That if you're a Christian truly following Christ. You're Christ-like. There's no way you can ever possibly purposely hurt another human being. And this is exactly the truth. Once again, I found it right in the Bible. And I'm getting ready to read it to you. I absolutely am Christ-like. I absolutely am a Christian. I am, in fact, the only Christian out of the bunch of them. And there is a demon here. Okay? What does the Bible say about darkness? John 1.5 the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Acts 26, 18. To open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light, and from power and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. See, you are no longer of the world. None of this stuff would be going on. None of this stuff. It's literally repulsive when you are awake to watch all this stuff happen. 1 John chapter 1, verses 5-7 to seven. This is the message we have heard from Him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with Him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another. There's no purposeful hurting of anybody. We have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. As always, I know what I'm seeing out here is not right. It is pure darkness going on out here. John 8, 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Psalm 139, 12. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as day, for darkness is as light with you. John eleven ten, But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. Luke 1, 79. To give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Do, do, do you understand? This is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. If you're a Christian, you will not purposely hurt other people. You will not gang attack people. You will not be out here saying people are not Christians. Who do you think you are? Once again, Luke 179, to give light to those who sit in darkness. To give light to those who sit in darkness. Christians do have demons. Where do they turn? They see people as demon slayers, which is another name given to them in Satan's kingdom. They see people as demon slayers, and now these people are saying they're not even Christians because they have a demon. In the shadow of death to guide our feet to the way of peace. John 3, verses 19 to 21. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light 
and does not come to the light, lest his work should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. 1 Thessalonians 5.5 5. For you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or the darkness. Ephesians 5.8 For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Walk as children of light. If you say you're a Christian, then behave like a Christian. It really is that simple. Colossians 1.13 He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. Ephesians 5.11 Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them which I believe is what I'm doing right now. 2 Corinthians 6.14 Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? Absolutely none. First John 2 John chapter 2 verses 8 to 11 At the same time it is a new commandment that I am writing to you, which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. Let me say that again. Whoever, lo who, whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. So every single person out here who called me a witch and a demon, Please understand, you are in fact still in the darkness, as I've been saying this whole time. Here we are, right in the Bible. I know I had to go and prove it to you all again. Whoever loves his brother abides in the light. We should not be purposefully hurting people out here. If you reside in the light, you see light. You want others to be in the light. You don't purposely hurt other people out here. Whoever loves his brother abides in the light, and in him there is no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness, and walks in the darkness, and does not know where he is going, because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Which is exactly what I'm seeing out here. Sleepers. Ephesians 6.12 For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. So we must understand that being a Christian has nothing to do with the, with the forces in the spiritual world that decide to inhabit a form because Christians are not true Christians because they are not awake yet. The only true Christian is one who follows the walk of Christ. And until you have transcended the world and you are not of the world any longer, you have no business calling yourself a Christian. So you are a Christian at the religious level, which means you are still in the darkness and you are still in the sleep and you are still in Satan's kingdom, which is everything I've been saying out here, okay? Okay, now God has supported me on this once again. 1 John 1 to 5, 1 5. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Isaiah 9 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of sleep, darkness on them has light shined. Psalm 1828 For it is you who light my lamp, the Lord my God lightens my darkness. 1 Peter 2 9 But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him 
who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Matthew 8, 12. While the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness, in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And uh, you all have seen over and over again that everything I say out here is constantly found in the Bible. You understand that now, I hope, everything I'm saying to you is truth. Everything I'm saying to you is truth. So please understand me. I have come from the darkest of dark places. And I now reside in the light. And I now am a true Christian. And I'm telling you all. We are commanded to be in the world and not of the world. And a true Christian follows the walk of Christ. And you will transcend the world. And you will not be proud of your of, of the what you've done in the darkness and constantly repeated out here. You will not, not attack fellow Christians, but you should be doing your best to bring them out of the darkness. But how can you do that when you yourself are still residing in the darkness and Satan's got a hold of that ego and won't let it go? So what is your next move? What is your next move? And understand one thing. You can fake it in front of a sleeper, but you can't fake it in front of a person who is awake. I've been telling you people all along I could see right through you. And I hope now you understand that I have never lied. I have never lied. 1 Kings 8.12 Then Solomon said, The Lord has said that he would dwell in thick darkness. 1 John 1.6 if we say we have fellowship with him while we talk and while we walk in darkness, we lie and we do not practice truth. Romans 13, 12. The night is far gone. The day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Genesis 1, 2. The earth was about form and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. You all have no idea how real the spirit world is. And uh, it's a shame. It's, it's really a shame. Because even these people who are casting out demons, they have no clue how real the spirit world is. They have no clue because they haven't woken up yet. I, I, I just can't anymore. Proverbs 4.19 The way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know over what they stumble. John 3.19 And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world and people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. Isaiah 50.10 Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? Let him who walks in darkness and has no light trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. See, the true servant of God is the one that the sleepers are all attacking. And this is, this is typical for what happens in the sleep. As I've told you guys over and over again, now sit and think about this. As I've told you guys over and over again, Everything you thought you knew to be true in the sleep, you will find to be the complete opposite of the true reality once you, once you pass, once you pass Satan's realm and you wake up. You will see that everything you have ever known to be true is actually a lie. It was false. It's the exact opposite of God's truth. So what's happening out here? They are all attacking me and they are all holding themselves up to be these these wonderful, glorious demon slayer pastors, and, and I am this this person who is a non-Christian who has a demon here, and the exact opposite is the true reality. You have to see this. Second Corinthians four six. For God who said, "Let light, light shine out of darkness," has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Luke 12, 3, Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark shall be heard in the light, and what you have whispered in private rooms shall be proclaimed on the housetops. 
Romans 121, For although they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks to Him, but they became full in their thinking. They became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. The ego took over. Oh, the ego took over, and Satan just loves that. Satan just loves that. Because you go deeper and deeper and deeper into the world, and you become deeper and deeper and deeper of the world. The exact opposite of what we have been commanded to do. Isaiah 42, 16. And I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know. In paths that they have not known. I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light. The rough places into level ground. These are the things I do. And I do not forsake them. And I have lived that verse. I have lived that verse. I have been through the darkest places. I have gone on the scenic route through Hinduism and I knew God was leading me every step of the way. And I have lived this first. Then he brought me back home. And here's the one thing I want to tell you guys. You see, I, I, I really thought that when I came back to Christianity, oh, thank you God, you brought me home. I'm with my own people. And what happened? I was attacked by these people. I was attacked by these people. And you know what? When God closes a door, do not ever try to open it again. There was a reason God closed that door. These people are, are, are not where I am. And I would be lowering myself back down into the darkness to ever want to be included in, in, their, in, in their whatever they have going here. So when God closes the door, it's for a reason. And you say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I will stand with you and go where you lead me. This is a solitary path, you guys. And if you're serious, expect these things to happen all the time. Expect these things to happen all the time. You will see consistently out here, these people who are in cliques, they are totally in the sleep and they feed off of each other's darkness. And the egos are massive. And this is what I have seen out here. And this is what I have been saying out here. And now I have supported it with God's word. There is no one who calls themselves a Christian who has transcended religion. That's all I hear these people talk about. Get, don't, be, uh, don't be so religious. That is exactly what they are. They are in such a sleep they can't even see where they are. But that is exactly where they are. They are at the religion level. They are still in Satan's kingdom and they are still in the darkness. This is how they can gang attack one person out here. This is how they can call a true Christian a demon and a witch. This is how they feel they are wonderful enough and spiritual enough and so specially called that they can determine who is a Christian when they are not even awake yet. This is what you call sleep. This is what you call ego. And you will see, pay very close attention to what you see out here. Now that you've heard me explain what the personhood is, how to identify it, what concepts are, how to identify it, pay attention to how you think, how you talk, and how the people around you think and talk. And it will stand out to you like a flashing light bulb now. You will be able to identify a sleeper within no time. And the, the most important thing is that you are able to identify in yourself. And then you do what is necessary to transcend it. That's the work. Transcend it. Start breaking your attachments. Start destroying that ego. That ego is what is keeping you tied to Satan. Start destroying that ego. You'll be blessed.